I'm excited to show you a tool today called Figurine that will make your terminal at least 837% more fancy. In some of my previous videos, folks have asked how I get that fancy little login banner showing every time I log into one of my systems via SSH. Well, in today's video, I'm going to take you through Figurine, the tool that lets me do just that. So you can find the Figurine project over on GitHub. The user Arsham, there'll be a link in the description down below, publishes this application called Figurine, and its entire purpose in life is to print your name in style. We've, we've all wanted our name in lights, right? So let's have a look here at the GitHub page. You can see just how many different fonts are available with Arsham, and I'm gonna take you through some of them, some of the basics in today's video, as well as the installation and some of the usage parameters that we can do. So let's jump over to my server over here. Let's jump over to Morpheus. I, I wrote a basic script, which is just gonna loop through a hello world bit of text for the next few seconds, just showing you all, of, well, not all of, some of the different fonts that are available for this thing. There are quite a few, but my personal favorite is one called, uh, I think it's called 3D.FLF, and you have to put it in quotes because of terminal stuff. Hello world. And if we do that, then you can see that I end up with the same font as I have for Morpheus whenever I log in. And this is true for all of my boxes. So I mean, if I just SSH to a different box that I've got, basically, I got tired of SSHing into a box and kind of ending up in the wrong place occasionally. So I just wanted a really obvious thing to say, hey, dummy, hey, Alex, you are on this specific box in big letters whenever I logged in. And so this is this is the tool I found to do the job. And I don't think many people know about it. So Let's go over how we get it installed in the next section. And so I've got a brand new Ubuntu box here with nothing else really installed on it whatsoever. Now, if we take a look at the project page, it tells us to, to install Figurine using Go. But the, the trouble is Go doesn't ship on a lot of distributions out of the box. So we have to do, on Ubuntu at least, sudo apt install golang hyphen go. Type in my sudo password. And you can see it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull in like 600 megs of packages. And this can take quite a long time, depending on your internet connection. Luckily, my test box has a fast CPU and an NVMe drive. So thankfully, with my gigabit internet, it doesn't take too long. Once that's done, we can do go install. Let me just copy this command from my notes. We can do go install github.com slash the name of the repo. And it will go and pull, <laughs> it will go, no pun intended. It will go and pull the package down from GitHub. And then you think, okay, cool. That means I can just do figurine, right? Well, unfortunately, because of the way Go pathing works, it actually installs the uh, binary into this bin folder here. So, and, and then if I run that, then we get figurine out. The first thing it does is it just prints the name of the author, Arshim. It just prints that over and over again. So if we look at the help for figurine, we can see that there's a few different things here. And if we do L, this is gonna list, it's gonna be a big list. It's going to list all of the different fonts that we can use and let me just do let me just count the number of fonts here 334 different fonts so uh, you are going to be playing around finding the font that you want for for some time uh, for me it's uh, dash f 3d dot flf as i as i showed you earlier uh, but for example let's just change that to i don't know usa flag dot flf yeah, I don't really understand. Let me make that a bigger one. Yeah, okay, I kind of see it's like stars and stripes. I kind of see it. So there's an awful lot of stuff you can do. So that's that's how you install Figurine using Go itself. Now, another option is to actually download the binary from the GitHub repo itself. So if we go back to GitHub and have a look under the releases section, there are a bunch of pre-built binaries. And one of the nice things about Go is you can build dependent dependency-less binaries. Uh, so if I click on here, right click on here and do uh, copy link address and go back to my terminal, I'm going to create a temporary directory here and then change into it and then do wget. Download that tar file, do a tar xvf to extract the file we just downloaded. And then in the deploy directory, we can see that we have the figurine binary. Okay, that's pretty cool, but I want to put that in my path. So I'm going to go ahead and just move that. I'm going to need to be root to do this. I'm going to go ahead and just move the figurine binary into my local binary path here. So that means that now figurine is actually on my path. So we've got it. In, it's still in the the Go folder under here. It's, it's still there if we wanted it. 
but it's also now in user local bin as well. So figurine is also there, which means because that path, the user local bin path, is in my executables path, you can see that here. Because that's in my path, I don't have to worry about exporting a Go binary directory to my path or anything like that. So personally, I would probably go ahead and just install it manually, but it's totally up to you what you want to do. And then once that's done, let's just test that with, uh, I don't know, what's one of the other options we've got up here? Henry 3D. Let's, I have no idea what this one's going to be. Uh, it works. How about that? There you go. So lots of options, lots of different ways to install this program, and none of them are too involved, but you won't find it in any of the um, apt repos, for example. Let's just do a, an apt cache, or the it apt search nowadays? Uh, for figurine. It doesn't exist in the Ubuntu repos, for example. Now, if you are the sort of discerning gentleman that prefers to do things automatically, I've actually written an Ansible role to install figurine for you. So there is a few things this, this role does in the tasks here. Uh, and essentially, it, it goes to GitHub, pulls down the latest release, uh, it does the install, right, depending on your architecture, uh, it will pull down the correct binary for you. So this will work on Raspberry Pis as well as x86 boxes and a bunch of other stuff as well. And then it will just install this into a directory so that it, it automatically starts at login. Now that's something we didn't actually touch yet over in the, the main um, the main window over here. So if we, if we take a look at Morpheus, which is my primary server, uh, I'll do it on M M1 actually. Uh, so whenever I log into M1, you can see here that it automatically prints a message using figurine. So if I do cat etc profile.d and then figurine as a script, you can see that I actually end up just basically running uh, create a blank line. That's what this echo quote quote does. Then it actually runs the figurine thing. And we can actually just run that as a script if we want to. So uh, let me just show you how that works. If I, if I just do that, it... Um, it just prints it out to the command line. So I mean, if I, if I went in and edited that script, for example, I could go in and do a profile.d figurine.sh and change that to be, I don't know, uh, Pied Piper, who knows? I just rewatched Silicon Valley, so I've got it on the brain. And then if I do that, you can see that the figurine script just prints out wh whatever is in that directory. Um, so that, that's basically it with uh, auto-login. You just want to make sure that you've got a, an executable script that actually lives in this profile D dot directory. I'm, in fact, I'm not even sure if that is executable by default. No. When the shell actually executes this, it, it doesn't need that to be executable by default. It, it obviously must just run that in a shell for you like that. So um, let's go back to Ansible for a second because I know that uh, certainly... For me, a lot of the value is the fact that I'm logging into multiple servers and I wanted this banner printing at the top. So how I do that is by using uh, Ansible, as I said. So let's dig into that for a second. All right, so you can see that I've actually got this role configured, ironicbadger.figurine, in quite a few places. So how this works in my infrastructure repo, at least, is because this is a role published up on Ansible Galaxy, which is kind of like an app store for Ansible roles, sort of. It lets you import things that other people have written into your code. So for example, you see I've got a bunch of Jeff Geerling's roles in here. I've got an artisan role to install Tailscale, some some role to install a bunch of packages, etc. etc. As well as a bunch of my own stuff like removing the Proxmox nag screen when you log into Proxmox. That's kind of nice. But this one, Ironic Badger Figurine, is the one we're going to focus on, obviously. So uh, when I put this in the requirements.yaml file, obviously the first thing I'm going to need to do is to make sure that I've got that Ansible role installed locally. So First thing to do is do an Ansible Galaxy install requirements.yaml. That obviously, in my case, I've got all of these things pre-installed. Now, in my Ansible config directory, I have a specific place that I put roles that I download from Ansible Galaxy. And that, for me, is the, in this Galaxy roles directory. Under here, in git ignore, I've got uh, Galaxy roles as one of the things that I ignore so that I don't recommit things that I've already put in a different repo somewhere else like that. Now, you you could do this using a git submodule sub -module if you want to, but in my case, I found it's easier to do it this way. Um, and so what that does is it imports that role from Ansible Galaxy into this directory here. And then you can see that this task structure and template structure here matches exactly what's in the GitHub repo underneath. So if we have a look, see here, figurine is 
inserting a bunch of Ginger templated values, uh, in this case of the Ansible host name that's running the, uh, the Ansible code underneath. Now obviously this is quite advanced and if I've lost you with some of the Ansible stuff, that's okay. All you need to know is that to, to actually configure this thing, you need a, as part of your Ansible deployment, you need a requirements.yaml, you need to import the role there like that, and then in your playbook, you need to import the role again in the specific uh, playbook uh, instantiation that you're running just here. Once you've got figurine in there, all that's left to do is if you want to, you can actually take a quick look at this. You can actually override some of these default variables for whatever reason. Um, you can change the version or whatever you want to do. You know, if you don't want to download the latest version, you just override that in your host or group vars, depending on what your specific Ansible configuration looks like. And then the only the only other thing left to do might be to override the, the Ansible host name with um, a variable called figurine name. So let's say on my Morpheus host, for example, if I wanted to go ahead and change that to be something completely different, I could change that to be figurine name. I could do, you know, host name. Well, I'm not going to do a variable. I'm just going to call this, well, Pied Piper again. Why not? Uh, and then that would run the automation. And as part of the templating that happens as part of the Ansible automation with Ginger 2 underneath, it would in, in, inject that Pied Piper figurine name into the script that I showed you that lives in profile.d and then it would print out Pied Piper anytime I logged into that specific server. But for me, most of the time, the host name that I'm interested in is the Ansible host name for that specific host to be printed out whenever I log into that specific box. So for me, most of the time, it works just fine the way it is. So uh, it's as easy as that. I hope that in today's video showed you the basics of Arsham figurine and that your terminal may go forth and be fancy. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. I've been Alex from KTZ Systems.